Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video, we'll be looking at the identification of bodily fluids, semen, where we'll be looking about the presumptive assays for identification of semen. So, there are basically three tests or the three tests, preliminary tests for the identification of semen or the seminal stains. First is the lightning techniques. Second will be the colorimetric assays. And third is the fluorometric assays. So lightning techniques, you all know that uh, we use, uh, we make use of alternate light sources for the detection of seminal steels under dark conditions. So let's see how lightning techniques. So dried semen stain, they flourish under certain light sources such as alternate light sources or argon lasers. So I have told you in the first video itself about the semen that the seminal fluid which constitutes 60% of the total seminal stain it contains components which are called flavins seminal fluid contains flavins and these flavins are responsible for giving fluorescence under the alternate light source or the argon lasers through which we detect their presence so what we have to do is we excite use excitation wavelengths between 450 and 495 nanometer which allows for the visualization of fluorescence with orange goggles so you have to use orange goggles to uh, visualize the seminal states after irradiating the stains with a wavelength of about 450 to 495 nanometer other bodily fluid stains such as saliva and urine stains, they can also flourish and with less intensity. So under this wavelength, other bodily fluids can also show fluorescence but of lesser intensity as compared to the dried seminal stains. So there, this is the difference, basic difference. And through this, you can preliminarily identify that the particular stain that is fluorescing under this particular wavelength of 450 to 495 nanometer could be semen. Or the seminal stains. So, this is usually how the examination of garment containing semen stains takes place. So, this is the suspected uh, evidence on which uh, we could find the presence of seminal stain. Firstly, we marked it. Then, under alternate light source, you can see that this stain is visible when the light of 450 to 495 nanometer is irradiated. And we are visualizing it using orange goggles. So this kind of fluorescence, it indicates that the particle stain which is present could be semen. Next is the colorimetric assays. So colorimetric assays, as the name suggests, the results will be particular colors, specific colors, which indicates that the seminal or the semen stain could be present in the particular evidence. So the first and the very more and the most common test is the acid phosphatase test. In the previous video, we have discussed about the acid phosphatase enzyme, which is present in the semen. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, first look that video, get the basic understanding of acid phosphatase and then come to this video and uh, understand the basic concept behind the acid phosphatase test. So, it is used for the detection of acid phosphatase, which is secreted by the prostate gland or the prostatic fluid secretion consists of acid phosphatase into the seminal fluid. So, this enzyme, what does it do? It catalyzes the removal of phosphate group from a substrate. Subsequently, an insoluble colored precipitate at sites of acid phosphatase activity is formed with a stabilized diazonium salt, usually in the form of zinc double salts. So, let's understand this. We are using a substrate, maybe a phosphate monoester. In the presence of acid phosphatase enzyme, it catalyzes the removal of phosphate group. So, this phosphate group will be removed from the substrate. R will be uh, separated and this phosphate group, PO4, is removed. So, you can see here phosphate and this alcohol is formed. Uh, insoluble colored precipitate at the site of acid phosphatase activity is formed with diazonium stabilized diazonium salt so this phosphate is further treated with diazonium salt where a precipitate of specific color will be formed so let's take an example of sodium alpha naphthyl phosphate this is 
the substrate which is taken the, for the examination. So what AP will do? It will catalyze the removal of phosphate group from this substrate. So this phosphate group will be removed. You can see here in the diagram. So alpha nephthol will be formed. This alpha nephthol will be formed, which is further treated with fast blue B salt, which is basically so by using a uh, fast blue B salt, which is the diazonium salt, an azo dye will be formed in the result, which uh, will indicate the presence of semen. So you can read from here that alpha nephthyl phosphatase. The phosphate is or uh, hydrolyzed by acid phosphatase to phosphate and alpha nephthol. Alpha nephthol is subsequently converted to purple azo dye with a diazonium salt such as fast blue B salt AP. AP there your AP is acid phosphatase. Now, uh, what are the limitations of acid phosphatase test? So, interference during a test by non-prostatic AP isoenzymes such as contamination by AP commonly present in vaginal secretions can create problems in specimens collected from victims. So uh, the, there are basically two types of acid phosphatases, the seminal acid phosphatase as well as the vaginal acid phosphatase. So uh, in certain cases, uh, there will be a contamination of AP with the vaginal acid phosphatase. So uh, this test cannot distinguish between these two uh, acid phosphatases. So here it will create problem in the detection of semen. Further solution is the application of substrates that are hydrolyzed rapidly by the prosthetic enzyme and at slower rate by the other forms of API enzymes. So we can use these two substrates, alpha nephthyl phosphate as well as thymophthalene monophosphate as the substrate for the detection of acid phosphatase. So this is usually the color which uh, indicates the presence of uh, semen which is the purple coloration that indicates the positive reaction of acid phosphatase activity. And the last is the fluorometric assays. Fluorometric methods are used for semen stain mapping. Acid phosphatase catalyzes the removal of phosphate residue on a 4-methyl umbiliferone phosphate substrate, a reaction that generates fluorescence under UV light. So here the substrate which is used is usually a 4-methyl umbiliferone. It is a fluorescent substance which gives fluorescence under UV light. So it can be considered as a substrate of phosphate. This phosphatase phosphate will be removed and 4-methyl umbiliferone will be formed. This will be detected when UV light is irradiated on the sample and uh, this will give fluorescence. So this is another way for the detection of uh, semen. This was all about this video. Uh, I hope that you all have understood the preliminary identification of semen through the lighting technique, the acid phosphatase reaction as well as the fluorimetric assays. In the next video, we will be discussing about the confirmatory test for the detection of seminal states. Uh, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. You can share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more knowledgeable content related to forensic science. Thank you very much for joining us.